In the past year, I've been developing the MAG1 through MAG5 series of magnetic generators. We pulse in on the primary a very narrow pulse, and we get a pure sine wave out of the Starship coil. This is not just a ringing. This is a continuous pure sine wave. Uh, you will see uh, uh, some uh, uh, scope shots later. Uh, the ratio coil is the primary is about a thousand windings and the secondary is 24 layers, 288 segments. So it should be a step down transformer, but just the opposite is happening. So coming up here, we're looking at uh, how uh, it's assembled there. You see the Starship coil on the end, the tuning magnet, which you slide up and down that to get the maximum output using a HANEC like, digital scope and uh, that's very important. You really can't do this work without that. And uh, so uh, I want you to use, or you can use this circuit, which is my HHO driver circuit for my HHO cells, but break the link going to the MOSFET and just drive it from the generator side. It, it, it's very dangerous to try to switch this with some MOSFET. MOSFET excuse me. Here is my live uh, research. Okay, this is a, uh, the MAG-1. Uh, the secondary has a two picofarad capacitor across it. Uh, but what is interesting here is when I turn this on without the capacitor being hooked up. Okay, let's just do that. You look at the, as I turn it on, you're going to see the uh, current come up. About almost 198 mils, okay. But look what happens to the current draw when I connect it to the capacitor. It's going to be charged in the capacitor. You see it drop down there? And as the capacitor gets charged, the current goes up. But actually, let me shut it off and discharge the capacitor one time here. And we'll do I'm trying to think how you can make use of this. Uh, it's just the opposite that you would expect. Okay, I gotta do both both sides of this capacitor. Okay. Not a lot stored up here. I want to make sure it's zero there. Okay, so I'm gonna start again. Here we go. 12 milliamps. And it's the capacitor is charging. But as it charges, the current draw goes up just the opposite that you would expect. Okay. Okay, and if we would disconnect the thing from the capacitor right now, that's the current draw through the circuit. So this is the secondary, this is the Starship secondary off the, the C core. There we go, I connected again here, so it's charging up here and that's the scope there also the waveform height changes if you take a look at that that's this is with a, a Shockley uh, full wave bridge so this is very odd but it's like if you increase the load you decrease the current draw so think about how we could use this. This is the MAG-1, okay. Now we're looking at a MAG-5 type series coil, I'm sorry, it's actually a, a Starship Type 5, uh, and we're using this now, and this would be, this would make sense, it'd be a step-up transformer like a Tesla coil, and we only have one wire hooked to the dead uh, light bulb and so uh, we're putting in 14 I think it's 14.98 volts and we're getting about 1.3 kilovolts out so you know this uh, and that's again we're just tuning it with a magnet stack and uh, so this result is quite expected and that but uh, going back to these other things that we were dealing with uh, also, Klanzar over in England had shown where he was putting LED modules inside the vortex. And that was a type 1, not a type 3. Uh, and the more LEDs he added, the less power uh, drained from the supply. Exactly what we were getting in the previous part of this video. 
So I uh, want you guys to kind of take up the research on this. I'm tied up with other things. Uh, this is uh, showing, uh, this is on the type uh, 5, uh, which is completely different than the type 1 and 3 mag. And uh, we're showing this the waveform is charging the, uh, uh, the capacitor through the Shockley bridge. This is one shot of the type 5 here. Uh, it's using a type 3 coil instead of a type 1, which gives you a much bigger aperture. This is the end shot here. The cores here are made up of uh, Russian rods. The Q is 800. Uh, there's about 1,000 windings. Uh, it's a different type of winding than you saw in the Mag 1. Uh, and this will not produce uh, the sine wave, but this will produce a tremendous spike uh, with uh, very little voltage in and a tremendous amount of voltage out. So, uh, and, and hardly any current. We got some charts coming up here. And I had to, to make them even fit on the paper. Now I'm showing you, this is the, called the Black Mamba. This is a, 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 a type a type of winding you saw in the, in the one, but it's how I approach it is entirely different. I'm not ready to disclose the winding technique on this. Uh, we call the uh, type 1, we used a typewriter uh, winding. So when you got to the end, you pulled back into the left and re rewound the second layer. So I think it was six layers of, uh, I don't know, 150 turns each in that very first uh, one you saw, and that was 17-gauge uh, wire, which is an overkill. You didn't need to have 17-gauge wire. Uh, here's the output of the, of the, of the uh, type 5. Uh, and uh, we'll get a close-up here and you'll see uh, the output. And on this, uh, I was using the MOSFET to drive this, and that's why I say be very, very careful. And look, you can notice here, look at the yellow line, that is the drive pulse. Notice it, at that it's, it's real long compared to the pulses coming out of the, the Starship coil. So uh, this frequency is 2.8 kilohertz. We have on the on the Type One had done uh, anywhere from 20 about 27 kilohertz up to 114 kilohertz uh, with different uh, tuning capacitors. And there's a spreadsheet that I uh, can send you if you email me and uh, uh, some tests that I made, so you can see that the efficiency changes uh, as frequency. Now this could be scaled up differently. Uh, by using a bigger core, you, could, you might want to drop it down lower. You can see it's pretty linear, but it starts to flatten out beyond about 12 volts. I don't know why there's a little bump there in the about the 8 volt range there. Uh, and again, these may not be too easy to um, to read, so I'd be glad to send these to you. I had to I had to divide the uh, uh, the graph by uh, a, a figure of 10. I think I said two was a figure of 10, so it fit on the page. But the numbers are correct. Uh, if I had, a, you would not be able to see that if I it would have gone off the page if I used the correct numbers. Uh, in the spreadsheet, all those numbers are there. And what's interesting, the red, uh, which is the current, never shows on the bar graph. It's so low. So this one has, uh, I think, the power. Okay, and here's the spreadsheet. Yeah, that one had the power uh, consumed. And so this is a, a preview of the uh, spreadsheet. So uh, I can't really give you any more help as far as uh, talking to you on the phone or emails. Uh, I've given enough here that you can go ahead and take it on your own. Uh, and uh, I've duplicated this many, many times, so there's really not going to be any problem uh, on doing that. So, uh, yeah, there's the thing where I said the yellow voltage, uh, I had to use a multiple of 10. Uh, actually, divide by 10, not multiple, but divide by 10 so it would fit on the graph. And uh, so this is this has consumed a lot of my time. My two investors, which both were flakes, unfortunately, but one was a nice flake, but she was still flake, and the other one let me high and dry just when we were going to produce the uh, the Starship Energy System. So if you need this information, email me there. And thanks for watching. This is HHO4 Volts.